Yes, hello everybody, it's your good friend Possible here, and I'm back with Joe. Hello. And we're here to talk about some of our favorite 80s cartoons uh, that we really enjoyed growing up. We left off, as you know, with the real Ghostbusters. Uh, again, all the original characters came back. I always got a kick out of the real Ghostbusters. Right now, at the time of this recording, they're talking about Ghostbusters 3 moving forward. They're closer than ever before, bringing people back and bringing the Ghostbusters back. Uh, Winston was always an interesting character in the Ghostbusters because he's not—he's the only one who's not a scientist. Yeah, he, he just—he just needed a paycheck. Yeah, he just wanted a job, and you know, just was looking for work, and he, right place at the right time. He became a, a real important figure as time went on. You know, uh, I think they did him a great service by adding him on there. But we're here to talk about more of our favorite ones, and we're talking, of course, about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That, uh, this one, uh, I used to love this show. You know, it started off great. Um, and, and actually, the origin story is incredible. And I'm not talking about the origins within the show. I'm talking about the, the origin of the show. For those of you who do not know, the story starts off with these artists who got together one day. And they were just decided to play around with art. And they decided to draw oxymorons. Uh, you know, things that are, that are opposite and don't go together, like hot and cold, high and low. Uh, in this case, they chose something very fast, which was a ninja, and they wanted it to match it up with something that, that would be considered very slow, which is a turtle. And, you know, together they created the Ninja Turtles. I remember seeing one of the first ones ever. They all wore red headbands and they all had weapons. I think they all had size, actually. Maybe one had a katana. But they all had, they, you couldn't see their eyes because they wanted to make them really badass and everything. Uh, what's interesting is, as you know, in the 90s, they came out with their first movie. Yes. And the first movie was actually, would, would be considered very dark. Uh, I liked it. I thought it was a brilliant movie. Um, but a lot of the people who made like the licensing and the toys and all that, they didn't approve of the violence or they didn't approve of the, you know, the storyline and everything. I felt, yeah, that was my favorite of the three. Mm -hmm. Well, they kept it very serious, but they didn't like it. Now this was still not long after the eighties. So the philosophy was if you make one, it's serious, it's down to earth. The next one has got to get sillier. It's got to be less realistic, you know, more campy. That was the philosophy of the 80s. You'll notice that in a lot of the sequels that come out of the 80s, they're very campy. And nowadays, it's different. Nowadays, the idea is you start off simple, but then you get darker and darker and darker. Things yeah. Get, things get worse and worse for this person. More drama, more action, more, more angst. And... Um, not in the 80s. In the 80s, it was, okay, we, we, we made a successful one. Let's get sillier and sillier, you know? Uh, I didn't care for how what the sim, where, where they went with the Ninja Turtles as time went on. Yeah. Um, not a fan of where Michael Bay is going with this. Oh, yeah. I heard about that. Yeah, he wants to change them into aliens now. So Teenage Mutant Turtles are now from, from another planet. Not exactly from... Uh, from the sewers like they were originally. But we'll see. We'll see what happens as time goes on. Uh, next up, classic 80s. Gem and the Holograms. Now, you have to remember, this represents everything about the 80s, starting with the hair. Yep, big hair bands back in the 80s. Big hair back in the 80s. But yeah, yeah. Not, not, even on, not just on women, on men too. <laughs> and also, these guys were singers who you know would also fight crime. Back in the day, a lot of people did that. E even G.I. Joe, at one point, had to st stop Cobra from brainwashing a bunch of people. But the band was gone. There was no one to play. So guess who decided to play for them? Well, uh, that was classic G.I. Joe. They get on the stage. They actually played a rock and roll version of G.I. Joe, the theme song. Exactly. And, of course, everybody loves it, you know. But uh, but that was very classic in the 80s. Uh, and that was a throwback from the 70s. In the 70s, everybody was a band, you know. And next up, we have, of course, Cops. This was a, more, a very, you know, interesting take on cop shows. Uh, what's interesting is that at the, in the very first episode, the guy in the middle there, his name is Bulletproof. Uh, he got the name because he was he went into a, a crime scene situation, and they shot him up. And I think that's one of the very few situations where somebody actually got shot and hurt during the eighties. Yeah, uh, interesting though. You know, this show came out, and um, they had to change the name at one point. Really? Yeah, they changed it to Cyber Cops. 
because oh. cops, remember the cops TV show? Yes. The live action? That one came out and they didn't want people getting confused. Right. Now, these were all uh, bi- more like bionic cops. They all had a special power. What was interesting, and I know she's kind of blurry, but on the far left hand side, there's a cop called Mainframe. She was a computer expert. And I think this was like one of the first shows that ever demonstrated somebody uh, like a hacker. You know, and they didn't call her a hacker because the term hacker really hadn't been invented yet. But everyone had their own power. There's long arm. He, yeah, he could shoot a handcuff out of his uh, sleeve and catch criminals like who are real far away. He could also swing. Now, there's this yes. one guy right here. I don't think he really had any special powers. I think he was just a cop. I want to say he was the vehicle driver, but I can't remember mm-hmm. his name, and I'm not sure if he was even that was even his. Uh, Occupation right. in, in the force. Now, a lot of these, of course, are very character. You have, you know, mainframe as the nerd. You have this uh, Texas guy. Sundown. As the, you know, old-fashioned Western cop. Uh, you had this one lady cop who could really be a master of disguise. That was Mirage. Exactly. Uh, but great, you know, very good stories. You know, they had, of course, they were trying to take over the, the, the crime city. The kingpin. Big Boss was Big his Boss, name. Big yes. Boss, his nephew, Berserko. Um, the one episode I really liked, it was my favorite episode called The Lowest Crime, where Berserko, his nephew, Big Boss nephew, falls in Nevada drugs. They did a drug issue because, I mean, dr- anti-drug messages were really big in the 80s. Um, he falls into his drug twist, crystal twist and Big Boss and uh, his gang go to the cops and say, if you need help bringing this guy down, he, he crossed the one line, I won't go. And the cops and crooks teamed up. That is a very different kind of episode there. When it comes to these things, too, I like Joe was talking about drugs. Drugs were a big deal back in the eighties because that's when you know the cocaine started to really come out. Um, this was before a lot of the major stuff like crank and stuff like that. But um, but back in the eighties, they actually tr- did try to avoid that subject many times, or they tried to really be very clever about going for it. But they were very big in just saying no to drugs. You know, and going back to um, the last one we did with the, my, the last podcast, uh, mm-hmm. He-Man. Yes. They actually did two episodes of He-Man that dealt with drugs. Now, that was what that they did were very clever about that, too, because this one lady, she, it wasn't really drugs. They didn't call it drugs. It was a potion. It was a but potion. But it made her dependent on more. It, it, she got dependent on it, so she had to keep taking this potion. And eventually she had to choose between, like, the potion or working without the potion, right? Yeah, well, she basically uh, she got put in a bad situation, and He Man basically told her, "Yeah, it didn't make you feel. You're not feeling good now. You, you know, you just you were dependent on this drug." Mm-hmm. So yeah, so I mean, very very clever writing. That's one thing I did love about the yep. even though they had a very simple format: good guys versus bad guys, yep. caricatures on both sides of the fence. Ultimately, they really had very clever stories because they tried to teach a lesson and they tried to you know, keep it fresh with all the people that were watching and all the shows looking very much the same. They did work hard to keep it fresh. Next up, we've got the Rescue Rangers. This one is, I remember racing home from school to watch this one. I think I was in high school at the time. Remember, no DVRs back then, kids. Yeah. If we didn't watch it or tape it on our VHSs, then we missed out. <laughs> we still have my VHS, by the way. Yeah. Um, what's very clever is that you know they took two characters, classic characters, and they added some new people. They added Gadget. They added... Um, Monterey Jack. Monterey Jack. The, the fly Zipper. I think his name was Zipper. Exactly. They had this great personality, too. Ch- even though they were both silly, Chip was still more of the serious one. Dale was the party one. He was the goofball. Mm-hmm. And, uh, of course, you, if you're going to bring up Disney and 80 cartoons, you got to talk about the king of them all, DuckTales. Uh, yeah, this is another one I really loved. I mean, this was part of, uh, I think it was part of a, a four cartoon series. It was DuckTales, Rescue Rangers, I believe Tailspin, and Gummy Bears were the other two. Oh, yes, Tailspin. Now, Tailspin, uh, a very clever movie a bit from Baloo. Based on the Jungle Book. Did, yeah, from the but Jungle Book. But it didn't book. have Mowgli, I think was the kid's name. Right. He wasn't, everybody was all, they had their own clothes and everything like yes, that. Yes, they, they had clothes. They also had, a, they, they lived in a very you know human-like world. It was like New York City. Shere Khan was basically the, the, the mm-hmm. main guy from the Jungle Book. Was like this uh, business, big businessman, right? And Ducktales too, just like that show. You know what I liked about this is that they actually gave it some interesting suspense. Even though it was very kitty like, it did have good stories and very good writing. Very good, yes. I love. You know, they had uh, Launchpad McQuack, my favorite character, Gizmo, who made the gadgets. Um, 
They did, they they really keep it going and really keep it fresh. And then, well, they did the uh, when they added more characters. I remember mm-hmm. Bubba Duck came in, the caveman. They went back and right. brought him forward. And um, what was the guy? Fenton Crackshell became Gizmo Duck. Yes. Oh, and they had their own spinoffs because Darkwing Duck came from this. Yeah, he. I think Darkwing Duck replaced um, Gummy Bears on the Disney um, mm-hmm. block. The, I mean, and, you know, it's so interesting because, let's face it, it's coming from Disney. And, you know, I, I always feel like Disney gets a bad rap when it comes to shows. People expect them to be kitty and goody-goody. And, grant you, this, this is not as violent as the other ones were. Yeah. Very safe show, but very clever show. You know, very definitely worthy. Uh, and, yeah, remember, they are taking characters that come from the 40s, okay? 40s and 50s. Some of the, yeah. And some of them even on the 30s. Um, you know, these are all pals of uh, and relatives of Donald Duck. And Donald Duck, every once in a while, he did make an appearance on yes. this show. Uh, people would make fun about the fact that they couldn't understand him. Yeah, you know? I always loved that one. Yes, and he, had, uh, and he was in the Navy and he had his problems. But, I mean, these were extremely classic characters and they were giving them a fresh spin. So it was refreshing to see that they could do that. And, uh, and you know what? We're going to close up this segment today. Join us tomorrow for part three when we're going to wrap up the rest of our 80s cartoons. And we're going to talk about the ultimate 80s cartoons. And it's going to be a cartoon that's still in publication today, that's still being made today. If you don't know who that is, wait till tomorrow. We will reveal the next 80s, the ultimate 80s cartoon. See you later. Yep. Have a good day.